Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and I have an 11 year old who is getting really excited about this whole Christmas thing. I always joke with him and ask him if he wants to cancel Christmas this year and just go travel somewhere and he never takes me up on the deal. Exactly 110 years ago today, the US Federal Reserve was signed into law by President Woodrow Wilson on December 23rd, 1913. Since then, the Fed, which is a private banking monopoly, has debased the Federal Reserve note U.S. dollar by 98% against gold. Woodrow Wilson came to regret allowing the Fed into existence, saying that a great industrial nation is controlled by its system of credit. Our system of credit is privately concentrated. The growth of the nation, therefore, and all, other, all of our activities are in the hands of a few men who are concentrated upon the great undertakings in which their own money is involved and who chill and check and destroy genuine economic freedom. Check in the description for uh, my uh, Miles Franklin Gold, um, my gold sponsor, and use DAI Gold. And by the way, folks, this right here, what's what the Federal Reserve is, is the same. It's the same reason that we have been exposing Ethgate. Remember this clip where this Lane Reddick, who's with the Ethereum Foundation and left, said this? This was the same thing. They were trying to duplicate the monopoly. We, other than the very small number of people like Vitalik who are public, you know, also the Ethereum Foundation multi-sig wallet address is public. We, we don't know, okay, we don't know. We I mean, I, I, you know, I can assume that the people who happen to be the crypto bros that happened to be in the room at that time and the very small number of investors who kind of got Ethereum circa 2015 did very well. Okay, right. All right, so, so you've joined the family. But the point is it's on the order of a few hundred people, maybe a thousand, maybe a couple thousand people. Right? It's a very small number of people. But within that, there's a few who have very significant interests. Yeah, it's a very long tail. And, you know, I've heard rumors, this is totally anecdotal, that like a very small number of individuals, like one or two-ish people, single-handedly bought up like very large percentages of the pre of the the pre basically the, the ico okay. um, because they were able to participate pseudonymously there were no limits let me tell you where my money is on those ve that long tail those very few wang zang blockchain jp morgan goldman sachs andrews and horwitz if i was picking four those would be your largest holders that's just my guess all right then we've got this Chad Steingraber makes a perfect point. BlackRock will become the world's largest holder of Bitcoin, giving them majority control of the supply, miners owned. BTC Maxis always used Ripple holding the majority of supply of XRP as a negative to its value. BlackRock owns Bitcoin Maxis now. Karma is a bitch. He's a thousand percent right. I said just like the, with ETH, the decentralization narrative was always BS. It's about the money. It's, it's always about the money. If they tell you it's not about the money, it's about the money. And now all these Bitcoin maxis who are, who are claiming do we decentralization, that's what we care about and all that, it's bull crap. Now, I wanted to give you another thought here, folks, because this is what's going on, I think. So I said something worth thinking about. Wall Street has every incentive to scare you about Bitcoin and crypto from now until the Bitcoin ETF is live, not announced. In my opinion, the opportunity will be during the period of their scare tactics, which I think you'll see a lot of scare, like Elizabeth Warren and Jamie Dimon, oh, we're gonna ban crypto. You're gonna see a lot of that kind of stuff between now and the time that these ETFs go live. Because remember, Wall Street wants to get all the money. They don't want you to own that Bitcoin individually. They don't make money off of that. I've, I've said for five years on this channel, the financial advisors that laughed in my face about Bitcoin five years ago, or for the last five years, I've told them all, anytime I talked to one, I said, nope, you're not going to be laughing. When The second you're able to make money on it, you'll be selling Bitcoin. You'll be talking about it more than I do. Um, so anyway, I think that you're going to see all kinds of scare tactics like that. 
You may have some major hacks. Don't be surprised if you if you don't see. Look, folks, if we've learned anything about the, the government that we now live under, they will do anything. So don't be surprised if you don't see some, in my opinion, government initiated attacks on on self custody wallets. That wouldn't surprise me at all if we or maybe a cyber attack or something like that so that Wall Street can throw their hands up. This was always the way it was going to happen, folks. They can throw their hands up and say, oh, it's safe over here. Come into our ETF. Watch. Just sit back and watch. All the fear will be manufactured, though. Um, now, check this out. These, th this, I've never heard Bitcoin maxis so interested in low fees. I mean, I've been talking about how for years XRP is faster. It's extremely a lot cheaper. Bitcoin and Ethereum are expensive. It's got all of the features that now that an ETF's coming out, the Bitcoin maxis now seem to think that those features are important. About a coin toss, will they get it all approved? I do think, by the way, to your point, they all will get approved within probably a week or two of each other. I think it's just going to okay. be kind of one huge batch of approvals. If they do, I don't really see any major advantage to anybody as being the first mover. I think we're going to see uh, quickly within three months, we're going to see maybe 10 to 15 of them being approved. And so it's just going to be whatever uh, people, whatever product people see that has the lowest fees, things like that offers the best service. Um, Will he do it? I don't know. Uh, if he does, I think it would provide a nice impetus. I don't think it is the impetus. Again, I just believe that liquidity is the lifeblood of markets. And if there's no underlying liquidity support, especially in an economy that's trying to grind to a halt and we're, we're heading to these stagflationary conditions, I don't think anything is going to boom. So if we do get a big spike, say say Bitcoin does get approved, we get these spot ETFs approved. I do imagine we would get a short term spike, but I would be yeah. you know I would be concerned that it's going to fade quickly uh, and and head back down to lower levels. Okay, so there's that. Then Chad Chad Steingraber, he goes, he says Arc Twenty One shares authorized participant this is an authorized participant agreement. And then they, he's all, there's also one for BlackRock. I don't know where these things came from. I guess it's a filing of some sort. And then, just like on clockwork, Fox Business is trotting out. I don't know if, if CNBC likes him as much anymore ever since he held up and tried to sell pizzas. but uh, Or Bitcoin pizzas. But now Fox Business seems to want Anthony Pompliano on to carry the Bitcoin narrative. <laughs> Here's something, folks. Same, same Fox business that dropped ETHgate like a bad habit and then tried to pretend like nothing had happened. My next guess says that Americans had to become market speculators because this is what happens as the U.S. dollar continues to lose value. Joining me now, Pomp Investments investor Anthony Pompliano. Uh, Anthony, uh, you included a chart in this as well to sort of illustrate, uh, you know, so many things that are happening here. We had the U.S. listed companies. This is another factor, right, going from over 8,000 to just a little bit more than 4,000. The whole thing seems to be conspired to funnel us, make us funnel our money into these markets. Otherwise, I mean, how do you keep up with anything? I don't know if it's a conspiracy. I don't, I don't know if people are that smart, but definitely what's happened is there's a structural issue in America. If you look at the debt, I mean, just in the early 2000s, we were still running a surplus in this country. Now we're running multi-trillion dollar debts. The total national debt's over $33 trillion. And so if you have this overhang of debt, you've got to go and you've got to devalue the currency. So as they've done that, we've seen this income inequality drastically explode. And so now you have 50% of Americans that are winning who are holding stocks, 50% of Americans that are not holding stocks are losing. And so what we've seen is since about late 18 or 1980s uh, and 1990 till today, we went from 30% of US households that held stocks to almost 60%. So we've right. doubled in the last call, you know, 30 something years. And so what that tells you is that people are waking up. They're realizing if I simply hold savings, it is going to get devalued away. I have to go into the market. And so doubling from 30% to 60% of US households now hold uh, U.S. stocks. And so all that tells you is that people are getting smarter, television, internet, et cetera, educating them. And I think that it's only going to continue. So here's the thing that I do find interesting, though, with that, the whole notion like, you know, do you have this much debt because Ch Japan was ahead of us, right? And I remember... Folks, I've been, in, I've been in this game in crypto for a long time. And I can tell you, I've, I've told you before, in crypto... I would bet that 95% of all of the quote influencers are literally paid operatives for government or whoever. 
if I'm if I'm placing if I'm in Vegas and I'm placing my bets, Pompliano is one of them. If I'm placing my bets, Laura Shin's one of them. I've watched folks. You can see you can see it. There, there are certain people that get served up things, and then there's other other influencers who kind of come along and they they build a following. And then others are just kind of like handed. It's almost like they're handed the following. My gut's right about 99% of the time, and I've been watching all these people for a long time now, folks. When I see people put their common sense on things like XRP on the shelf and they're not dumb people, it's a red flag, okay? I've seen Mike Novogratz do it. I've seen Laura Shin do it. I've seen Pompliano do it. And these are the same people we know that they don't really believe these things. We've seen it over time. Yassin Mubarak makes a good point. Someone should file an XRP spot ETF application in Hong Kong. I like this guy. He's smart. Meanwhile, Hong Kong says it's now ready for spot crypto ETFs. Folks, don't be surprised if out of nowhere, I mean, would that be the play or would that be the play out of nowhere, an XRP ETF shows up. Check this out, Egrag Crypto, XRP, Super Guppy turned green. Here it is, check it out. The Super Guppy has gone green in the weekly time frame. Conservatively speaking, we're eyeing $5.50 to $13. The odds of hitting these targets are shooting up dramatically. It's like a one-way ticket now. How about that? Um, check this out, Ripple Whales have bought around 360 million XRP over the past week worth roughly $223 million dollarinis. Stuart Alderati wanted to bring this to everybody's attention. Before the SEC sued Ripple, Chris and Brad, three years ago today, they, offer, uh, they offered us the following settlement. The SEC would announce to the market that XRP is a security and the market would be given a short window to come into compliance. We said no, one, because XRP is not a security, two, the SEC never built a framework for crypto compliance. No matter that the spin that Clayton Hinman Gensler or any or anyone else puts on this case now, it was always about one thing: proving that XRP is not in and of itself a security. We put everything on the line. Few thought we would win, but we did. In the process, we exposed the SEC for the hip hypocritical tyrant it is, and the industry in the U.S. lived to fight another day. Onward to 2024. I raise my glass to Stuart Alderati. What's it going to take for Gary Gensler's subpoena? Great point here. Where's Patrick McHenry? I thought these were good guys. Warren Davidson, Bill Hazinga, Financial Committee, where are you guys? The American people watched another 12 months go by with no accountability. You can, this country is screwed, folks. If these people that have openly and willingly committed crimes and, and abused their offices and abused the American people. If these people skate, you can't have a country. Look at the island guy. How many people have paid for that? More about that in DAIXRP.com, by the way. Look at this. Stephen Narioff weighs in. Gary, Gary had said if you're suspecting it, some shady business in the financial world, let him know. Stephen Narell says, Gary, can I also use this to report shady business in the financial world by the SEC? I have filed whistleblower claims with the SEC, including insider documents and uh, a detailed description of multiple fraud frauds. Let me see if the SEC acts on any of them as they are implicated as well. I'll, I'll mail them, I'll make them public if and when I can legally. Ooh, ooh. All right, we're going to go in um, DAIXRP now. We're going to we're going to show you we're going to uh, in the group today. We're going to embarrass Senator Elizabeth Warren, rightfully so. She deserves all the embarrassment she can get. We're going to ask her if she wants to change the name of her anti-crypto army to a different kind of army. We're going to play this clip about, you know, this guy that you're probably not allowed to talk about on YouTube uh, that Tucker Carlson's talking about. And I'm going to play you probably the creepiest, this is probably the most bizarre and creepy video from one of the victims of you-know-who, the guy from the island, 
I'm going to play that in the group too. And trust me, it is weird, creepy, and bizarre. And I was like, what? I like to, I sent it to some people. I, I was texting it to some people. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? What? I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family. In DAIXRP.com, what we're going to really be ta showing is all of the people who have been telling the truth for all these years and showing the facts. And those are the people who have been attacked for all these years. And they still are being attacked. That's the reason I can't play a lot of this stuff on YouTube. I mean, talk about manipulation, <laughs> censorship, whoa, here we go.